Um, so, uh, Take One Step for us was all about getting people to reflect and think about one new skill. Okay, so they're coming at it from a new skill perspective. And also, we were keen to link to the All Aboard framework, which we're also partners on. So our logo, as you can see, uh, ties in with the color scheme and the notion of the different lines. Our tell week was over five weeks. So we took the notion of five days and spread it over, sorry, over six weeks. We had to skip one week because of rag week, student rag week. Okay, so this is what we put up when we were making our pitch for funding, and uh, of course this is what we achieved. Uh, we promoted it, we ran a diagnostic, we ran our tell, shows over, tell road shows over six weeks, we also ran a student and staff innovation fund. It led to OERs and enhanced capacity and community. To break it down, our diagnostic was based around the all aboard framework, so we, we boiled that down to how to. So that was the first learning and we presented on that last week at EdTech, the notion of the stops on the All Aboard. How do you localise that? And Marion mentioned about that taking ownership of All Aboard framework. So we came up with 26 how to's then on a drop down diagnostic. So the students and staff were asked to identify a skill, that, one skill they would like to learn by March, one new skill. And if they had a skill to share, on that list to also identify that. So that was critical. It was diagnostic in terms of need, but also diagnostic in terms of skills that you could share as a staff member or a student. So based on that, we ran our, our, our tell roadshows and our innovation funds. It all came out of that. And, and uh, that was incredibly useful. And I'll talk about that shortly. And it, it again, uh, all nicely hung together on the all aboard framework, ultimately. And then we ran the evaluation and we're, in the, we're nearly finished the write-up on that. Now, we, we started off part of our promotion, Central to it was our little uh, move Lee. Uh, so we're going to play that. So it's, it's under two minutes. Fingers crossed this will work. Okay. That was a taster of the campaign. Um, and the outcome then, in terms of responses in that very tight time scale, um, sorry, next slide. Uh, across the three institutions, UL being the, the larger institution with around 13,000 students, for example, um, versus Mary I and UL. Um, so we, we got a, a good um, indication then in terms of the the diagnostic need and skills that could be shared. But what's really interesting is the variation it showed up. 
These are just the top five. So we found that across the board, there were two things required. How to create and write a blog, 2-1-1, and how to use mind mapping, 5, 4, and 5. Now, that was big news to us. You know, we, we provide professional development all the time. We would not have predicted that there was a demand across students, professional, de development, uh, professional services, and academic staff for blogging and mind mapping. And that is fed back to, to the All Aboard project as well, nationally. So, of course, then, that meant they had to be there key to the different roadshows. But interestingly, two of the campuses, UL and LIT, if you look at two, three, and four, have commonality. And those three are not here. In Mary Mackle College, we're really concerned about our digital identity. But we're not really worried about creating programs online and so on. And maybe because we, we've been putting a huge amount of effort over the last number of years into, uh, say, uh, the VLE training, etc. So it's just interesting that it brought to the fore a, diff, you know, re a relief in terms of the different needs. And importantly, that allowed us to do things differently in each campus. So it allowed for a differentiated approach when we went to give our roadshows. So we had our staff and student roadshows, and in some cases combined, and then we had the Thurless campus there as well. It also, in the, so within those roadshows, the, the, what was on offer would match the, the top skills that were required. And equally, um, people identified the, the skills that they could share. So the majority of our CPD was provided by peers. Peer, teaching, peer lecturers, professional development staff, or students. And then we also brought in some outside um, assistance and also webinars. Our innovation fund for staff, we took a differentiated approach there as well. And that allowed us to, to look later when we were evaluating as to what worked best and why. So at Mary I, we did a general call. We have a pot, make a general call. You can try and pitch for all of it. You can try and pitch for, for a small amount. It also brought out people who wanted to do things that didn't really require money, but they, they took the opportunity to ask for help, and that created um, a nice connection for our, our uh, one to one CPD sessions. Um, UL took a, a grant approach where they had 1,000 euro grants, and they got 15 projects out of it. Interestingly, Seamus and LIT took a department level approach, and Seamus might get a chance to talk about that later was another interesting approach. So we like that, getting a different angle and seeing which worked. Student Innovation Fund. Now, guess which one of those was most, most successful? Yes. Uh, the, the Mary I Student Innovation Fund with the first prize of uh, 1,200 euro was very successful. Um, it was very successful for a few reasons. Student union were just so core to it. We parked it on their Facebook. They re it really could not have happened without, particularly a shout out to Alison Deverell, the Vice President of the Student Union. She was just so involved in helping us to link out to the students. We put out the call. We had, in the end, um, I think five uh, OERs created by the students. And we had a 10-day showcasing window on Facebook and uh, YouTube. In that 10-day 10, 10 window, we had nearly 4,500 engagements on social media via the Student Union platform. So we just were so happy with that response. Um, the whole design branding was also central to the T-shirts, the Take One Step sign, which is down there somewhere. Oh, it's up there. It's like, we go nowhere without the Take One Step. See, connection with all aboard. Uh, keep it there, our baby. And our pull-ups. And later on, you'll see our cake. Take One Step cake. Okay. Social media. <laughs> Again, was, was a core part of the campaign. Um, we have 300 followers now on Twitter. Um, take one step. It's easy to find. Um, we had 105,000 uh, um, impressions on Twitter in a 90-day period. Am I right, Michelle? 
Um, and we also have stats on our engagement factor, which Michelle may come back to later. So um, we, we, we were really happy with that. Twitter seemed to be our, our most successful one, actually. Again, the students were core to it. Um, we had a student ambassador structure we could build on through, say, the library ambassadors and also our work with um, all aboard. But, but they were crucial also to, say, adjudicating the innovation fund. So, say, student union from one institution would go to the other institution to adjudicate it. Etc. So, uh, and also, um, they, they, they were they were very central to, I guess, having peer-to-peer -peer, uh, promotion and engagement. There's a little still of uh, one of the roadshows, one of the UL roadshows. There, you can see that there, the, you know, how to flip a classroom is there. Uh, how to do blended online courses. How to measure impact factor in research. Now, interestingly, that's not on the all board. So we've pointed that back pointed that out to all aboard, you know, measuring uh, impact is something you need to get up there because say, institutionally that's, that's uh, important for us. Um, so we were able to build in the webinar and that was shared out nationally, etc. So that's just a little taster of what it looked like. Um, we, had, uh, we had 15 skills presented over the roadshows in terms of attendance uh, across the two in UL, the one in Mary I and the two campuses in LIT. Got a little view of the cake there, um, the sign. Uh, we've created, uh, coming out of the roadshows then, we have 30 OERs, which are up on the website. I'll hopefully get a chance to show you those later. And then we, out of the innovation funds, we'll have case studies and OERs, they're ongoing still, and nine OERs from, from the students. You know, and they're really nice. One of them will be used in student, student orientation around student identity. Local and national impact then? Well, I'd say at a practical level, we've got really useful standard operating procedures for how to do this that will sustain. We have a knowledge bank. Um, we have a, a clear plan for CPD, but it will change. That's the nice thing, that when you look at this and use it in five years' time, you can, you'll, well, you should see a change because if they're still looking for the same uh, CPD, it's, it's telling you something. We've got nice case studies of innovation, which everyone knows, like the most inspiring things to see what your colleagues have done and how it's worked. Um, we think we've established a strong and sustainable brand through the T1 step. Um, we have our OERs created, curated and disseminated. We have a direct mailing, a mailing out to those who signed up all the time, you know, how are you getting on your skill, here's a new OER, etc. And of course, the building of our community of practice. Now, we're, we're almost done with evaluation. We're using uh, Stuttlebeam's model and uh, Deirdre, I'm going to hand over uh, to Deirdre Ryan, who's going to just give a taster, a few slides, just tasters on, in terms of feedback. So I suppose for those of you who were here in November, you will know that we were using uh, Stuttlebeam as um, our um, a framework, I suppose, really, our backbone to the project design. So in terms of evaluation right from the beginning, we knew that we were going to be looking at, I suppose, the CIPP model. So in, the, in terms of content, input, process and product. Now, Anne has already talked about our baseline analysis in terms of, you know, how many signed up, how many OERs we've created, what we did on our roadshow days. One of the really strong things that came out of it is in the, uh, is in the input in terms of our standard operating procedures. We really focused on trying to write write those up to really document what we did in each of the, the institutions. We really feel that we have created a sustainable brand. We're ready to go again. I think T1 Step has kind of hit that um, level really with, within our own consortium, but also it's trickling out there into, into, into the world as well. Um, then in terms of process, that idea that Anne said about our differentiated approach, we could do that with our roadshows. We had our innovation. Communication is an animal of itself that we are learning so much about. And I think you spoke to that uh, back in November in terms of how do you engage people. Um, and then in terms of product, our OER. So we have our OERs up on the website. We haven't got a chance to show you those, but we are, and we let our staff know as uh, um, across the consortium that they're out there. Um, and so those who couldn't attend actually are engaging with those now. Impact on teaching and learning, I have to say, that is a picture that's just emerging. We can't say that we know 
Exactly, but we do know from conversations we're having, from um, from stuff that we're being asked to um, to uh, CPD, we're being asked for that it has caused a ripple and an impact out there. So really, I'm not going to focus on the quantitative data because quantitative data at this point it's really qualitative that we want. So we did run a survey, but we also ran, ran about five or six um, focus groups with staff, with students, with those who contributed, those who didn't attend anything, so that we got a kind of a feeling on that. So. So I'm, you know, we did get very, from the survey, yes, very satisfied with it. But really I'm interested in the focus groups which tell us that there was very positive, keep going, they would like to see it rolled out every year. And one of the things I particularly like is, the is that, that it was nice to have staff and students together. I got to sit beside a student, I got to hear what they had to, you know, say about something or think about something. So that was really important about our roadshow days. Um, so very quickly on <laughs> to the team. This is the team. We had 16 meetings in that space of time. And we come from different backgrounds as well. Um, you know, we have uh, library, we have ed tech, we have TNL, so we have ICT, we have, you know, got this large group of people together. Um, so um, it was, um, yeah, quite a good group, a vibrant group, and uh, we would hope that the steps will continue. Um, there is the cake. <laughs> there is Anne, who loves that sign. I think she takes it home with her of an evening. And uh, so that's basically, um, where we're at. Thank you. Mm -hmm.